Hello, disciples. Here we are, another Holy Week, another Easter in the midst of multiple pandemics. We've seen the death toll from COVID-19 rise to almost 550,000 people. And while we give thanks for the presence of vaccines and millions of people being vaccinated, not everyone still has access and there are variants and infection rates still rising in parts of the U.S. and around the world. The trial of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd began this week. And we are once again traumatized, bearing witness all over again to that horrific evil act, crying out still that Black Lives Matter. We are standing in solidarity with our Asian American siblings against the insidious and evil violence being visited upon their communities. Violence that isn't new, but that has been amplified during the season of the pandemic by racist rhetoric. Knowing that stimulus checks are coming and have come in the US certainly helps, but until we make up our minds that until we all have enough, we have not done enough, uh, that will only be a temporary fix for far too many communities. We still have not fully addressed the systemic nature of poverty and low wealth. We've watched an insurrection at the nation's capital, and we have recently seen a wave of voter suppression legislation being passed in far too many states, dismantling the most precious of citizenship rights, the vote. Over 2000 years ago, looking back in history's eye, I can only imagine those women, yes, the women who were there standing at the foot of the cross, watching Jesus's broken, beaten, bruised and battered body hanging there. A political execution, a trauma certainly for a mother to witness, leaving a community bereft and terrified. But, but, on the other side of that cross and all of its horror is a testimony of life beyond death, hope beyond despair, healing beyond trauma. It is important for us to mark Monday, Thursday, the institution of the Lord's Supper, that sharing of the open table, the invitation into a new relationship between God and God's creation, the giving of the commandment that we must love one another as Jesus has loved us. And we must sit with the pain and despair of the cross, if only because life continues to offer up unjustified pain, unnecessary suffering, and because we must hold on to the hope of the resurrection, the reality of the tomb that manifests on Sunday morning. We must believe that the kingdom of God is possible as Jesus taught if we faithfully follow his example and bear witness to that limitless love of God, loving neighbor as we love ourselves. It is that hope that has the victory over death and it's that hope that has victory over the grave. It is that hope that has victory over injustice and suffering. It is the risen savior in whom we must have our confidence trusting that the Holy One who has begun this good work in us will be faithful to complete it. The limitless love of God is revealed in the person and life of Jesus can truly be manifest in our world if we decide that that's who we are and that's who we want to be. The familiar song says that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Church, because Jesus lives, we can join together to see the kingdom of God manifest in the world as we work and advance and advocate for justice and peace. Because of Christ, we have hope and we must remain committed to bear the good news of Jesus Christ, to bear witness to the limitless love of God for all from our doorsteps to the very ends of the earth. And yes, we must move through Thursday and the pain of Friday, the uncertainty of Saturday, but we must never forget that Sunday morning, Resurrection Day is coming. May the spirit and hope of our Lord's resurrection reignite your passion to serve your community, 
to dismantle systemic injustice wherever you find it. And most importantly, that work is possible if we remember that we are called to bear witness to the limitless love of God. May it be so. May it be so. <laughs>